Okay, guys, um, I want to do a quick video just, um, talking about, um, something I didn't really plan on talking about on the channel, but someone commented on my Sega Genesis, uh, Switch review, um, about how, because they were curious how I was being affected by this, uh, pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, and I was going to get my wife on here to uh, talk about it, but she doesn't really like being on camera, especially after her uh, dental surgery. Um, I already explained it in, in a community post. She was having uh, her teeth pulled, and uh, she has um, she has to wear dentures, so she's not really she's not really up to being on camera. But um, but I, I pretty much know everything that that's been going on with her and I, so. I'll be speaking on her behalf, basically, because she told me she would have just been here just so I could agree or disagree with what, what I was saying. So, um, this is all what me and her are pretty much going through at at this point in time. Um, so, like, overall, I mean, we're, we're fine. Like, it's, it's, it's kind of a kind of a bit of a change for us but not really because we're well at least I'm used to uh, staying home because for, for a lot of years I didn't really go out too much um, before I met my wife I never really went anywhere uh, besides um, besides school and that was pretty much it maybe out to eat every once in a while with my mom or dad or something, uh, but after we met, after my wife and I met, we we were out doing stuff all the time uh, together. Uh, pretty more so after high school, but after we met, we I, I is when I really started to go out and do stuff, and uh, it's kind of, it's it's more nerve wracking for my wife right now because she actually works in the healthcare industry, um, so she's, like, on the front line, so to speak, um, I, I don't really like when they say on the front lines, because it makes us think kind of military, uh, but I guess it kind of works for, for right now, because of what's going on, uh, but, I mean, like I said, she works in the healthcare industry, so she's, not really, she's not really putting her, herself at risk as much as other people are because of what she does, but I don't want to go into detail what she does because I don't want it to, like, affect her job in any way, but, um, not that I don't think it would, but, um, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to divulge too much, uh, personal stuff on here, but, um, basically, the, the, the way things work at her job they they check every employee every day for um symptoms they do temperature checks at, when they walk in the door uh they scrub up they wear face masks they don't wear the face shields but they wear face masks uh they um my wife actually bought her own, bought her own face masks um so um it's not like the M9, whatever. It's not those. It's not like the really, really good surgical, medical, top of the line stuff. But it'll do the job, I guess, for what she's doing. But it's still kind of nerve-wracking for me, I guess. Because, I mean, you never know if, like, when she goes out to work, if someone there is going to, like have it, but if they have any symptoms, they get sent home, um, and tested right away, so, I mean, I'm not as worried about it, because they're being very proactive about it, so, it kind of mitigates the fears I have about possibly her contracting it and bringing her home, um, but like I said, I don't think about it too much, because it doesn't it's not really one of the, she's not in the line of work that 
it's really, like, she's not putting herself at risk. Like, she's not working around COVID-19 uh, every day. Every day, She's not even, like, working around a period. But she could potentially be exposed if one of her co-workers, fellow co-workers, would have it or something like that. Um, and coming to work and maybe they were asymptomatic or something. And then they could can pass it on that way. Which um, I would think um, most of the co-workers would be getting tested. I would hope they would do that. I don't know. I didn't know I asked her that. But I would assume they would be testing people that would possibly be like at risk or have might have been in contact with somebody like that. So other than that, like mentally, like I guess we're, I, I know I'm fine, like mentally on the level with like knowing that she's not probably going to bring it home with her at some point. I'm, I'm pretty okay with being comfortable with her going to work. Like the first couple of days I was kind of like, mm, I don't know if I really want her going to work and possibly bring this home, but I'm not too worried about it now because, well, I guess I can say what, what she does. She's, it's all I'm saying where, where she exactly works because she works in a nursing home or basically an assistant living facility um, with a bunch of older people and people that need help doing stuff. So that's what she does. And that's what, that's what I mean, like, She's kind of putting herself out there, but not really, because it's not like she's a nurse or doctor that actually works in like a hospital that works around COVID-19 uh, constantly. Uh, but it's still it's it's a little worrisome. I think about it every now and then uh, that she could bring it home potentially. But then again, so could my dad. I don't. But they're probably practicing the same kind of social distancing stuff that everywhere else is. I, I Actually, I know they are because my dad has told me that before. Because he is still working. He doesn't work in the healthcare field, but he is still um, working because um, what, what, where he works, um, the company he works for, um, as far as I know, they, they help build machines that are or help like send parts or something to build the machines to make like tests and masks and stuff. I think is what he told me. I could be completely wrong about what he told me. And then uh, basically, where he works is is like semi essential. So he's still working. Uh, it's not he doesn't work the same hours, but um, he works like he's still working like daily, like, every day, except Sunday, um, so, I mean, w- w- as a family, we're fine, like, but, like, as a couple, I know that's what most people are probably, like, concerned with, and, like, how are we dealing with it, um, and, like I said, I can speak for both of us, because my wife doesn't want to be on camera, really, which I'm sure you guys understand that, um, but as a couple, it's, it's, it's kind of hard because we we like to go out and do stuff on the weekends and during the week we like to go out to the, to, uh, the store, Walmart, Target, hang out with our friends, whatever during the week. Mostly dur- during the weekend when I go to the flea markets or Arcade Legacy, which I've mentioned that place uh, a few times on the channel. Um, but not doing that, it, it's it's kind of hard because uh, that's really the only alone time we get as a couple, um, which is kind of hard because I mean being married is is great, but like when we don't live alone like together. Uh, in our own place, and we sh- share a space with my parents and my older brother, it's it's hard to be alone, and 
now it's even worse because we can't go anywhere together. Um, and some weekends, even when she works, like some weekends she would work, and then I would just be home alone or with my brother um, all day and be missing her. And, um, it's, <laughs> I don't want to get so weird about it, but um, it's, it's, it's hard because I miss that that time we spend together. Uh, the more we go through this, because as a married couple, it's it's hard it's hard to find time to like be alone uh, with. The way our living circumstances are like, and I'm not knocking it. Like I'm not saying it's bad or nothing. I, I know my brother doesn't mind um, stuff, but like you guys get what I mean. Like husband and, and wives, they want to be alone, or they just want to be together with no one else um, being there, just them two together. And it's hard now because, like I said, we're stuck at home. We don't get like that one day a week or on the sometimes on the, on Fridays and Sundays we go out to dinner and we it's usually just us sometimes it's also friends but usually just us and it's hard um, to not have that time together anymore and yeah we could go to the park together and stuff but I don't really like doing that like going to the park and stuff because. It just seems like a waste of battery life for my wheelchairs for me, but I mean, I guess we could do that, but still, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't really want to go to a park either right now, like, you're not really supposed to go out, I mean, they say you can go to the park and walk and stuff, but don't, like, do the six feet thing, uh, I don't know, it'd, it'd just be better not to go to the park. I mean, when all this stuff is done, we can do stuff like that, but, I mean, it's hard. It's hard on an emotional level, and like, on a, on a couple level, like, as a couple, it's, it's hard. But, for me, um, for me personally, like, it's hard because I never realized this, but the more time... I spend apart from my friends like that I made at the flea market and uh, my godchildren and um or basically my 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 other friends basically their parents um <laughs> it's it's hard not to like talk to them and like yeah I can talk to them on Facebook but but I mean like and whatever else but like. I'm saying, like, in person, like, see them in person, and, um, it's just weird, because, you, I never thought about this, but since I've started going out places and meeting people, and getting to know more people than I usually have over the past, like, I don't know, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, I don't know, um, <laughs> it's, it's weird, because I miss that contact with people um, because it makes me feel so isolated when, when I don't talk to any of those people. Because I, I, I feel like I feel like when I don't talk to people like I'm I don't know. It's it's a weird feeling. Like I feel isolated and I can only talk to my, like my, like my wife about stuff. It's some stuff I want to talk about she's not into. Um, the stuff I want to talk about with my friends or joke about or whatever that I can't because I can't talk to them in person. Um, and it's also affecting, like, the way I do my channel because, like, I've been trying to, like, cut back on how much I order stuff on eBay and Amazon and stuff because of all the stuff that... Um, all the stuff going on with COVID, I mean, the mail service could get 
get slowed down. Amazon's definitely affected by it. Um, sorry guys, I got the hiccups. Um, anyway, um, but it's it's getting hard on the channel too, because I, I I really don't know what else to do for the channel right now. Even even like to go on a segue here for a second. That's not about COVID or nothing, but like from the channel in general, like I don't know where I can go from here. Like, yeah, I can keep getting handhelds, but like I feel like I got to do something else to like mitigate that because as I keep getting them, like you, you, you guys don't want to see the same stuff. Like if I get more package stuff, you guys don't want to see that that stuff over and over again. The same games, um, but that, I'll, I'll save that all that stuff for another video, because uh, there's stuff I want to talk about in another video. I don't want it to bleed into this video, but um, well, I guess I could, because the person that really asked said they wanted like an update on me in general. But I'll, let me finish the whole COVID thing first, and then I'll move on to other stuff. Um, but like. I never realized how important, like, my friends actually were to me, like, mentally and emotionally and stuff like that. Because I'm kind of depressed about it because I can't interact with them in person. I'm not, like, I'm not, like, depressed, depressed to where, like, I'm, like, on medicine but, or anything like that. But I'm just saying, like, mentally it's kind of, like, draining. Like, I want to go to the flea market. I want to go to... Uh, the restaurant, my local uh, Taco Bell or Burger King or wherever, inside and dine in instead of like getting carry out. Because they all ask like, how am I doing? Like when my wife goes to pick up food, they'll ask how I'm doing. <laughs> so and it, it warms my heart to know that people are curious about how I'm doing. Um, not, not just them, but also you guys. Some of you guys were like concerned about like how my wife and I were doing during this time, and we're fine, like, like I said, we're fine, but, uh, it's just hard, and the last thing I want to talk about before I move on to more things, um, is, um, the way, con the way conventions are going to be, um, for going forward, and not like, because I'm going to be at any or whatever, but just like, conventions in general, because, like, I've noticed a bunch of, a bunch of, um, I lost my train of thought, a bunch of conventions are actually, like, starting, at the, there we go, I, I got my train of thought back, a bunch of conventions are starting to, like, cancel because of all this stuff, and a bunch of concerts and stuff like that are canceling because of this stuff, and I realized that too many games hasn't really done anything yet with like canceling it, and I'm like, huh, that's kind of weird. Uh, because they did cancel their uh, game swap they do in in April this this month. Like it was like supposed to be like last week or something, I think. Um, and it got postponed to next year because obviously they can't have mass gatherings right now. But in two months which is going to be June, like, will that convention be a thing? I feel like it won't, and I don't want to get my hopes up that we'll be able to go to it, because my wife and I were really looking forward to it this year, and um, it sucks, because I wanted to go to that to talk to other YouTubers about, like, getting pointers from my channel on how to, like, grow my channel, like, what I can do to, um, where I can, like, share my link and, um, stuff like that and help grow the channel, um, and hopefully get it monetized and stuff like that. Not, like, just asking for tips, not, like, asking them to, like, give me shoutouts or nothing like that, just, like, asking for tips and just chatting with them, because, like, last year I talked to, uh, John from Spawnway Media and, uh, Jay from the Game Changers and Pat Dane Punk for a little bit 
Um, and they were all super nice, super cool. Um, guys, like I said in the video that I did talking about it, but I was kind of looking forward to talking to them. And, um, again, um, but now that that's not going to happen, like, that was going to be like our one trip for this year. Because Horror Hound already got postponed. Because that was supposed to be last month. In March. And that got postponed to May. But a lot of the people that we wanted to see. Canceled. Because they couldn't. Uh, make the makeup date. So. Um, a lot of people wouldn't want to see. Canceled. So we're, we ordered tickets already. So thank God they have a rule. Where they can. You can use them up to like two years or something. So, um, we can always save them for like 2021 or 2022 even for our, the Cincinnati area, uh, which is where I'm from. Um, but, because we don't want to go to like, because a lot of them did reschedule for like other places, but we don't want to travel that far for like one person. Um, because we've never really done that, because, um, I just, I don't think it's worth it to travel for one or two people to meet them when I can probably meet them again in a couple of years, um, anyway, so that, 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 that's the other thing, too, is, like, that I'm concerned about the future of, like, conventions, not just too many games, like, the Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati Comic Expo we went to last year, I'm concerned about that as well, like, will that get canceled, even though that's in September? Um, that might get canceled. I have no idea. I don't know how long this thing is going to last. That's the thing. I don't know how this, how long this No one really does. People can say projections, and all these health professionals can say all these projections. Um, Fauci and all these people can say all these projections, but they don't, they don't, they don't know. It could, it could all end next month, next year, who knows? No one knows. That's, that's that's the scary thing about this. And no one knows how high the death toll is going to get either. And that's the other thing that worries me, is if, God forbid, like, they, they, they do decide to do too many games, well, what if, what if someone there has it? And a mass amount of people start contracting it, and they bring it home. And they and then one of us gets it. That's what concerns me about going to that convention. I'm kind of thinking not not doing it, but like I would hope too many games. The showrunners or the con runners, however you want to put it, would really think about it hard. Um, cause yes, it would suck, but I would much rather err on the side of caution, um, than, like, then hold it and do it, because it's not, like, a huge, huge convention, but there's a, I don't know the attendance, but, like, there's gotta be at least five, six, seven thousand people there, at least, and that's a lot of people that could potentially have it. And pass it to other people. And I, for one, wouldn't want to take that chance. Now, would they require you to wear face masks and stuff? And maybe, like, limit the amount of people going into the um, vendor hall at one time? I don't know. But that would kind of defeat the purpose of the whole convention, I think. Because the whole purpose is to, like, interact with people. Because I talked to so many people uh, at that convention. Um, so, and I helped out a lot of people too, with, uh, recommending wheelchairs and recommended that, uh, affordable wheelchair to a bunch of people. Um, so, I mean, I think that the world's going to be different for a while and it's not going to be a quick and easy, let's snap, open up everything like people keep saying, um, or wanting, I should say. Because uh, it's not going to happen that way. Uh, no matter how bad we want it to as a society and as a planet, um, it's not going to happen that way. Um, which, like I said, sucks. 
But I would rather err on the side of caution, like I said. So I don't know if they're going to cancel. I would imagine so in the next, like, couple weeks. Uh, we're going to get an email from them saying, like, hey, we canceled. You're going to get reimbursed for your hotel. Because we didn't buy the tickets for the convention yet. We booked our hotel room already. Like, back in January, I think, is when we booked our hotel room for it. Um, so, I know this is a long video, but I'm trying to think of other things that would be prudent to talk about that kind of deal with this pandemic. And too many games in, like, conventions is, like, kind of topical for me, at least, because it's coming up, and I'm getting kind of nervous about it, because, like, if they do decide to cancel it, um... I'll be, like I said, I'll be disappointed, but, like, I'll kind of be glad at the same time, because at least they're being smart about it, because on the website it says, like, they're talking with the uh, state people and health departments and trying to figure out what the best course of action would be, be. so hopefully soon they'll figure it out. Um, I mean, I don't know. I I don't know. I, I I feel like if I keep talking about it, I could ramble off like two hours about like what I think they should do and what I think people should do. The last thing I want to say about it is if you guys, if any of you guys feel sick with anything, even if you, if you feel bad any kind of way, I'm not saying like just COVID related, please. Stay home. I, I really I really do think this and I I worded when I recorded this the last time I I worded it in a way I didn't really like and that's kinda of why I'm glad I didn't record the audio because I worded it in a way that would probably make people mad, but like don't go out if you if you think you've been in contact with anybody that's been sick with COVID, whatever, just don't go out. Go Give yourself a couple of days or a, or a week or two. See if see if you have symptoms or something. I'm saying even after this is over, like even if this is over, be more careful about when you go out or what you do when you're out. Make sure you wash your hands frequently. Make sure you carry sanitizer with you. I always carry sanitizer with me. My, <laughs> it's funny. My parents used to like joke with me. And say like, oh, you're a germaphobe. Why do you always have sanitizer with you? And, well, <laughs> now it's kind of funny that they're recommending you have sanitizer with you. And I've always been that way. I, I'm not a germaphobe by any stretch of the means. Because I've gotten sick from being at conventions before. Like, I, I swear, one year I went to Horat, I got sick like the day after I came home with a cold. So I would, I definitely think it was... That convention that year that got me sick, um, because I I wasn't I had stupidly probably itched my nose or scratched my eye or something, or someone might have coughed or sneezed on me. I don't I don't know what it was, but that's what I'm saying. I'm being more cautious about stuff like that when I'm out, and that's something that I wish more people would be more um, proactive about, like washing your hands. Um, um, just being more hygienic. And if you're sick, or you think you're sick, stay home. That's the biggest thing you can do is stay home. Because I feel like, like I was going to say before, I feel like if people would have done that, like if they would have known about like COVID, like hindsight being 2020, really none, none of this would have mattered. But like if someone would have known, like, Hey, this COVID thing is gonna happen. Hindsight being 2020, a lot of people would have stayed home, and they could have mitigated this issue. But no one knew this was gonna happen. No one knew this was gonna happen. And yes, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories and stuff. I'm not gonna get into that stupid stuff. But like I'm saying, like I said, like no one saw this being a worldwide pandemic type thing. I know I didn't. I thought it was gonna just stay in China and maybe 
go other places in patches, but not as much as it's been. It's just been nuts. Like, but I feel like if we all be smart and social distance and all this stuff right now, we'll be fine. And then when they open back up, just be hygienic, be um, be wary of your surroundings, be more cautious when you sneeze or cough, cough into your arm, your armpit, your elbow, whatever. Don't cover your mouth with your hand. Do it that way because then it all goes downward instead of forward. Um, just simple stuff. I mean, it, the only the only bad thing that I, that I feel like it's going to change for, for a while is that people will be more wary about like handshaking and like hugging, unless it's like close friends. Like, like when you meet someone at a convention, you'll be like shake their hand or, um, like if it's someone you know, you'll be like hug them. Cause like there's been a couple people I've met like celebrity wise that I've um gotten like lucky enough to like hug or handshake. I feel like that's not gonna be a thing anymore. And my wife and I were huggers, so we like to we're, we're very close people. We like to we like to show our emotions. It's it's one of those things that I'm gonna miss about this whole thing because I feel like that's gonna be the one biggest change with this whole. COVID thing is the way people interact with each, interact with each uh, interact with each other. God, I can't talk. Um, but like I said, that that's not a big deal. But like, I'm a hugger. I like to hug people. Like if you come up with the street up to me on the street, I, I know who you are. I'll probably try to hug you. If you're a friend of mine, I'll hug you. I'm I'm a hugger. Like that that's my nature. Um, so. Uh, that's gonna suck for a while, but I hope we can get the the handshaking thing. Like I hope this comes back, cause I like handshaking. It it's it's a sign of friendship, a sign of closeness with people, of like bonding, I guess. But like I don't want to like I said, I don't want to sound like a germaphobe. But even after I would shake someone's hand, I would, cause I always have my sanitizer like right here. By me, I I always squirt some in my hand, and then rub it in my hands, and then boom, sanitized. And then when I get home or back to the hotel room, I wash my hands. That's that's how I do it. I don't. I make sure not to touch my face, my nose, my eyes, my mouth, my ears, anything, until I wash my hands or eat any food, because if you touch your food with contaminated hands, that that that's a good way for it to transfer, um, as well, so, there you go, um, I know I rambled for like 10 minutes about that, but, I mean, I wanted to get that out there, just to let you guys know that I'm very, uh, conscientious about being very hygienic and clean, and I'm very wary about people and being careful about what I'm trying to, um, do when I'm out, and Try to be as clean as possible and as uh, safe as possible when it comes to like spreading germs and keeping everybody safe. Even before all this happened, I was very conscious about it. I I usually try to share my sanitizer with people. Honestly, like do you need a little, little squirt of sanitizer? And some people are like, sure, okay, and they're usually okay with it. Now I feel like that's gonna be more prevalent. Like people will be like, hey, can I borrow some sanitizer? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so anyway, guys, before I end this video, I want to mention one more thing. And uh, that's what I want to give a huge shout out to people um, on the front lines and people that are like working in the healthcare industry, um, delivering food, pizza, whatever, um, Uber or DoorDash. Uber Eats, whatever, whatever you're doing. If you're in the food industry, fast food, whatever, whatever you're doing. If you're an essential worker, I thank you guys so much for doing what you're doing because it, it, it's really scary out there right now. And um, I want to give I, I want to give a special props to um, everybody um, that's that's a current patron Patreon supporter of mine and 
you know what? I'm just gonna say thank you to everybody on, like, that is supporting someone on Patreon. Not just me, like, everybody on that platform, because a lot of you guys don't realize, but Patreon is very detrimental to not only my channel, but a lot of other smaller channels, and sometimes bigger creators, because a lot of their videos get demonetized, and they rely on um, Patreon as a way to uh, make a living, which I wouldn't be comfortable with that, but, I mean, if, if, I, if I chose to do that, I think you guys would, would back me with that, but I don't really want to go that route, but some people do do it, so I have to get special props to those people, so I want to um, shout all you guys out uh, properly on this video, because I usually don't, and I'm actually going to do this, and I apologize if I um, mess up your names, so I want to give a special shout out to all of you guys, uh, Alex D. Lagarza, Alexander Rende, Baron Sivim, Barry V, Dave Kim, Daniel Childs, Dave Gorgian Kalus Kaluskovic. I I probably butchered that. Like I said, I'm sorry. Uh, Harold Huckabee, uh, Jared Matthew Angler, probably butchered that as well. Jeff Schmidt, uh, Jeremy's Mai. That might be like a merge thing with two people. I don't know. That's that's a weird screen name. <laughs> Justin M. Day Dagens, Day Dagens. I I don't know. I'm very bad at pronouncing last names, unless it's mine, which I think a lot of you would have a hard time pronouncing my long last name. <laughs> Logan Ward, uh, Luti Gens Lucas, Genk Lucas. I have no idea how to pronounce it. Probably butchered that. Um, Michael Lee, Mitchell, Omar Chavez, Patrick Oliver, Sarah Hollyfield, Walker, Zeno Gaberti, and my most recent one, Freddy, which I do want to say something special about him because he actually did send me a message after I, uh, after he, uh, pledged what he pledged, and he said, keep up the good work, and I really enjoy your handout game videos, and, uh, I enjoy your content, and I, I really, I really appreciated that, um, so thank you for sending me a message, because that made me feel really good that you, um, uh, like what I'm doing, and I hope all you guys on Patreon, uh, enjoy what I'm doing, and I hope in some small way that I'm, I'm making it feel like you're getting your money's worth, I guess, when you're supporting me. I hope I'm, I hope I'm doing good on my channel with what I've been getting with, uh, your guys' support. I hope it's okay. I, I, I know it's not ideal. I don't like having to rely on Patreon to get things, um, for my channel, but it's, it's a lot easier than having to ask, like, my wife or my, my parents for money, because, like, like, if something, if, like, I just can't go up to them and be like, oh, I need X amount of money. Like, now, if I see something now, and I have the money, that's the, that's the good thing. I can rely, rely on it as a way to be like, yes, I can get this for the channel. Or, yeah, I can get this at a later date if I build up the Patreon to, like, uh, $200 or $300 or something. I've never done that yet, but I'm just saying, like, that, that will happen eventually. But, but basically, I just wanted to thank you guys for continuous, continuing to support me throughout the whole uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Because I know it's hard for people right now uh, with people being furloughed, unemployed, um, stimulus checks going out to people. I know it's hard because a lot of people are out of work right now. So if you, if you are having any kind of financial difficulty, please don't feel obligated to stay on with my Patreon. And I know that sounds weird because I know you guys, like, enjoy supporting me, but, like, I'd rather you guys save that money for, like, yourselves and not worry about me because I'll be fine for, like, 
six months to a year, however long this is going to last. Uh, but I just want to make sure you guys are okay, because it's not, I don't like relying on my Patreon as much as I do. That's one of the reasons why I wanted, why, why, why it was so crappy when I got demonetized when, when YouTube changed the rules, and I'm kind of getting, like, kind of emotional about it, because I, I don't like talking about it, because, because you guys are a huge part of this channel, and I don't think the 24 of you, or the 12,900 of you that are subscribed to me, realize how detrimental my Patreon is to the channel, and, like, how it supports what I'm doing, uh, not just with handle games, with getting new equipment like this headset, uh, this other stuff. I, I, I can't even think of, like, things to mention, because there's so many things that you guys have helped me to, to get, and if I had more support from you guys, then I could get a lot more things, but I don't want to ask for more support, especially right now, but, like, I'm saying when all, when all this is over, like, I would really appreciate it if at least half of my subscribers could try to donate or pledge a dollar to my Patreon. I don't offer you guys anything in return because there's not much I can offer you guys in terms of, like, physicality. It's like I can do live streams. I can do, like, early access stuff, stuff like that that I need to stop being lazy about and try to actually figure out how to do it. But pa Patreon's weird with, the, like, the rules and stuff you can do because I've been emailed by them a couple of times like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this. So I, I got to try to be careful what I, with what I try to do um, as rewards. Like, I can do write-ups and stuff, but I, I'm i really not that good of a typist. It takes a while to write up stuff, so my blurbs would probably be short or I'd probably just do audio blogs like I did the one time. If you guys like that, which a lot of you guys didn't even check that out, I don't think. Just to let you know that I will be doing that more if a lot more of you guys want to see that stuff. Um, but, uh, like I said, it's, because it, it, this is what I'm going to close the video out on. I I don't care about being re-monetized. I really don't. And the only reason I say that is because, and like I said earlier, this is this is the segue part of the video. Because you guys on Patreon are the reason that my channel was still afloat anyway. Even when I was monetized, I wasn't making a ton of money via the AdSense and stuff. Like, you guys don't understand how hard it is to make, like, good money on AdSense and on the ads and all that stuff and the CPM and the all that stuff. It's, you get, like, two cents per click or something. Not even that. I think it's, like, half a cent or something crazy. It's, like, not even monetarily a thing, really. Like, until you get, like, tens of thousands of views, which, obviously, I'm not there and obviously, I'm never going to get to that 4,000 watch time hours at this point. Like, the way my analytics are right now, I'm not going to get there. Does it suck? For me, kind of, because that means I have to rely on you guys to be, like, my lifeline as a way to, like, keep the channel going. Because, like, I would still find a way to do stuff even if I didn't have Patreon, but, like, I feel like... I wouldn't have any, any, really as much new content as I do now if I didn't have the Patreon. And I feel like... This, this, see, this is, this is what I'm going to hate. And I'm probably going to get fired for it. But I feel like this is my job. And people can say, oh, well, you're not monetized, so you can't say it's your job. Yeah, I can, because you guys that support me on Patreon are the reason 
I keep doing content and keep trying to do new things and keep trying to get monetized and keep trying to grow my channel because eventually I want this to be an actual job to where I can make a, a living wage and possibly do things and go to conventions and get sponsorships and all this crazy stuff that other big YouTubers get and get all these review copies of stuff and crazy stuff like that. I want to get to that point, but the the way I do things, I just don't think it's going to be a thing. And I I don't think, it's not because of like COVID or nothing. It's, I'm not, I'm just tagging this on at the end of the video because I don't really want to do a whole separate video on it. Because someone asked me, like, how, I, an update video, so this is the update portion of it. Um, so this is probably be like an hour long video, so, um, so if you want to like pause it and take a break, go ahead and do so. But, uh, but like I said, I don't think my channel is ever going to get to that point that where I'm going to have like, uh, I'm trying to think of a realistic number here. Uh, like we'll say 50,000 subscribers by the end of 2022 or something. And the as I put that number out there is because I know that a lot of places, like a lot of conventions and a lot of companies, they won't send you like review codes unless you have like 50 or 60,000 subscribers. And you won't get invited to like conventions if you have like, if you have a certain amount of subscribers. So that's, that's why I said that number because I know that's how a lot of them places work. And the only reason I want to get up that high is to meet some of the people that helped me get there. Meeting you guys. Like, I'd want to meet you guys in person, shake your hand, if if we're if we're allowed to at that point. Um, sign stuff for you if you want me to devalue stuff by signing it. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't do it for the money, per se. But I would do it as a way to like be like, yeah, I'm actually doing something besides doing this for for a hobby. Like, I feel like a lot of people just look at my channel like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing; he's just doing it because he has nothing else better to do. I mean, you're you guys are half right that say that, but on the other hand, like, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go, and I've been doing it for almost 11 years, and I feel like I've I've hit my peak, I think. Like, I don't think I'm going to go any higher at this point, because the quality is just not there, and there's stuff I have done the pipeline that I want to mitigate that with. Like, my wife wants to get a new laptop for both of us, that we both can share and use, um, that I can stream games from like PS4 and Switch and stuff like that, and then get an Elgato uh, capture card, um, stuff like that to mitigate stuff like that and make the quality better. But I know there's other issues, like case in point, the background. I know a lot of you still have issue with my background. And what, what all, how cluttered it is. Guys, I get it. But try, try to understand, please, this, this setup is the best I can do right now. Like, I, I, I don't know how to get it across to people that want me to make all these grandiose changes that I can't really do. Um, I shouldn't say I can't do them, but like, circumstances, the way things are laid out and the way things are, I, I can't physically do some of that stuff like get a green screen or stuff like that. I can't do stuff like that because I don't, I don't have room to put stuff like that. Even if I had like an overhead thing that I could pull down, it would be in the way, it would get in the way. Like if my brother had to go some, do something and, like, 
if it wasn't with him pull, I, I don't even know if he can get pulled at once. Maybe they'll like pull up, but like I mentioned this before, I'm sure you guys know he's blind, and like I'd be concerned about him running into it, and it it would be a whole thing to like set back up, and it would just be a whole thing. It, it's not worth it. And it, as far as like studio lights, where in here do you guys see room to have studio lights? There, there's literally nowhere in this room, or even in this house, like, none of the rooms in this house are good for a setup like that, like, for that to happen, I'd have to, like, rent, rent out an actual studio space, like other big YouTubers do, like, a lot of the bigger YouTubers that I, that I subscribe to, they don't even film at their house, half of the, half of the people film at, like, their studio that they rent out, or, some people have like a dedicated room in their house that they can do stuff from, but I don't have that luxury because the disability kind of mitigates like what I like. Even if I had, like, we have a spare room up there, but I can't get up there and film up there. Plus, that room right now is being used as a storage room anyway, so like, even if I could. Do you know how much work that would be to get me up there and get it all set up? Every time I'd have to film a video like this, I would have to go up there and do that. And it would be annoying. It wouldn't be worth it. And I'm not saying I don't want to make better videos like that in the future. Like, if and when I ever move out, of course. Like, my wife and I have already talked to you. If, if we ever move out, I would have my own, like, office. I don't... I don't know why I would call it an office, but whatever. That's, that's what we that's what we called it when we were hypothetically talking about it. To where I would film stuff, to where I would have wouldn't have such a cluttered background as people call it. Guys, when you when you share a room with people, that's what happens, and it is what it is. Like even if I wasn't sharing room, it'd probably still be cluttered because I'd have to have stuff where I can reach um, everything. Like, a lot of the stuff, like the Marvel's Capcom figure you see back here, like, that that I would put up and hang up somewhere if I could, but I don't have room. Um, so, it wouldn't be like sitting out like that, but I think it looks cool back there anyway, so that's why it's still sitting back there. And plus, I don't want to put it in storage. I kind of like it just sitting there. It's kind of cool to look at, because I, I like weird stuff like that. Uh, but, um... But yeah, I know there, there's a ton of people. I I don't get comments on it as much as I did, um, like back when the GoFundMe stuff was happening. Like, oh, you need to get better lighting and stuff, blah blah blah, all that stuff. I I don't get that many comments anymore because I think people realize um, that I really can't do anything about it. Finally, but I feel like that's why my channel isn't growing because people like automatically assume since I'm wearing like a plain blue or red shirt every video um and the background's all cluttered I'm not very organized with what I talk about and what I say that my channel's weak and it's not worth subscribing to which I mean for me I think you guys are wrong but like from the from, if I was uh, if I wasn't me and I was like looking at my channel objectively I, I see where you guys are coming from, but, like, I would still give my channel a fair shake and maybe check out a couple videos and judge if I want to subscribe or not. Because, like I said, I've been losing a lot of subscribers over the past, I would say, three years. And I don't know if it's because of YouTube, like, still weeding out all the spam stuff I was getting back in the GoFundMe days, because... I got a lot of spam subscribers that I even went through and um, got rid of. And I feel like I got them all, but maybe I didn't. But I have a hard time believing I had like six or 7,000 people that were all spam. I don't know. Maybe I did. But if I did, I want you guys to know I did not pay for them or do anything stupid like a lot of people do to pay for subscribers. Like, like some people do. I don't know why you do that because... Uh, if YouTube finds out, they will uh, terminate your channel. That is one of the terms of service things that they will terminate your channel over is if they find out you're uh, paying for subscribers, which 
I don't. I feel like I feel like I shouldn't have twelve thousand nine hundred whatever I have, but because the only reason I say nine hundred whatever is because my monetization page when I check if I'm close to being being monetized, uh, I'm being transparent right here with you guys. It says like twelve thousand nine hundred. When I look at my um, actual page, it says like twelve thousand nine thirty four. So I have no idea if it's like nine hundred or nine thirty four. It doesn't really matter. Like, 34 subscribers isn't really that big of a difference. Now, like, if it was, like, I, I don't know if it was, like, maybe it rounds it down or something. Maybe if it was, like, 12,895, it would round it down to, like, 12, 12.8 or something. I don't, I don't know how it works. But I don't know. Anyway, guys, I know this video was really long, but I wanted to kind of, um, just meld all that into one video because I didn't feel I'd make another video about um all the frustrations with uh having the channel and stuff like that because I've actually done a video like that in the past and filmed it and didn't upload it because I didn't know how it would be received but I figured since I'm going to be uploading this video I might as well just put it all out there put it all in there and see what happens I know it's an hour long video but um I want to get it out there, and uh, just tell you guys, like, if if my channel doesn't get any bigger than 12,900 or 12,500, whatever it turns up being in the next two, three, four, or five years, then whatever. I don't really care. But, like, I would, I would relish at the fun of being one of those YouTubers that people are like, Oh my god, look what this guy did. Look look how he made it work. Look how successful he was. Kind of like being a trailblazer for, um, I guess, the, dis the disabled community, I guess. Because there's a couple of YouTubers that are disabled that um, are fairly successful. Not in, not in any with CP, I don't think. But there are some with like other disabilities I know that are successful. Um, but... Who knows? Maybe someday I'll I'll do something that's worth um, my channel taking off. Uh, besides the GoFundMe, which was unintentional, but you never know, guys. But I have fun doing this thing with YouTube. So um, anyway, guys, that's how I'm doing. That's how my wife is doing. I know she wasn't here for the video, but she doesn't like being on camera. Like I said, after her dental surgery, she's not really comfortable with uh, talking. Like I said, guys, I, I I told you guys on a community post, she she had dental surgery. She doesn't really like wearing her dentures. I get it. I'm sure you guys understand. Um, I explained to you guys about that. Uh, but thank you guys for being so supportive about it too. When I mentioned it to you all on the community page, you guys were really supportive about it. So thank you guys for that. She really did appreciate that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm gonna get a drink of water. My throat is so dry right now. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like and comment down below if you like this video. Please stay safe out there, guys, during this pandemic. To close out this video, just stay safe out there, guys. It's no joke. Just listen to what all, all the governors and uh, everybody is saying. Just be safe out there. And don't do anything in large crowds or something crazy. Don't do anything crazy. So anyway, guys. Uh, anyway. Please leave a like, comment, uh, um, and a little, uh, please leave a like and comment down below if you have any thoughts or want to shout out somebody that works in the healthcare industry or something, or in the front on the front lines of any kind of job they're working during this pandemic. Uh, leave, leave a leave a comment, and I'll, I want to read you guys a story about how you're doing with it. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the notification bell if you if you want to subscribe. There's going to be end screen cards on your screen right now for my subscribe button, my Patreon button, and the recommended video. Who knows what that's going to be with the subject matter of this video. Prob It'll probably recommend my GoFundMe video, maybe, which would be kind of funny, but um, it might recommend that. I have no idea. We'll see what it recommends. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check out the links below in the description as well for Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Discord. And my Patreon's down there as well. 
I do weirdly have a Teespring link down there as well. I didn't reopen my Teespring store yet, uh, but I will soon when all this stuff is done with because they're experiencing massive delays over at Teespring. I planned on doing it last month, but I didn't because of all this stuff happening. So that's why I haven't had my t-shirts back up because I know some of you did buy t-shirts and mugs and stuff. So thank you guys that did buy the t-shirts. I'm working on new designs and stuff like that. So um, I'll keep you guys updated on the community page of my Facebook and Twitter when I relaunch my T-Spring. So yeah, I'll be doing merch soon, basically is what I'm saying. Hopefully, eventually, again. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please uh, go go join the Discord too, because I want to grow that Discord as much as I can, uh, because I want to chat with some of you guys like live and in person. Because I check it every so often, but every time I check it, no one's on. So I need to check it more often. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long for you guys. It's been a long time since I've done like an hour long video, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Um, stay safe out there. Peace out, guys. And uh. I guess, I guess that's it. I, I don't know what else to say. So, yeah, stay safe with there, guys. That was loud. <laughs> okay, guys, stay safe. Peace out.